Mrs. Chiron again with another art lesson for you to do uh, at home uh, to take a little break from the strenuous activities you have to do for school. You need to also work the right side of your brain, the creative, uh, artistic um, part of the brain that really helps all things. Did you know drawing is exercise for the brain? And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a reptile today. You can either do a lizard, a chameleon, an iguana, and I'll show you the differences as we draw. So uh, you can also do it just with black marker and pencil, or you can do black marker, pencil, and some colored pencil if you have it. Now, if you absolutely don't have a black marker uh, and you are using pencil, only, uh, then you have to remember to press very lightly when you draw in case you're having to erase something. And one of the most important things that we do is to use the space of the paper. So it doesn't matter what size paper you have, the stronger, thicker the paper is better than the really thin, like computer paper is not the best. But that's all, if that's all you have, that's okay. So how do we begin? We are going to need black marker, pencil, and a piece of Kleenex tissue or toilet paper. Uh, that's for shading. And the first thing that we're going to do, and by the way, if you look at this one, you don't see the whole chameleon. Part of the chameleon's body should go over here. You see this foot, these two feet, and you see bleeding off the bottom of the paper and coming back on, you see the chameleon's curly tail. So if you choose to do that one, it's better to draw it too big where it doesn't fit than to draw it too small. So let's say for instance, uh, we are going to do uh, a chameleon. You don't start with a shape like a Pac-Man, okay? Absolutely not. And if you draw slowly and visualize first, you'll be much more successful than if you draw fast. So let's say uh, you're gonna start out with a kind of an irregular shape, uh, a little bit thinner towards the front. Kind of looks like a country. Now, if you're doing a lizard or an iguana, you're probably going to start with a shape a little bit longer like this. Uh, you can go ahead and close it up. Yeah. So as big as your fist or almost as big as your fist, that's the way I would begin. Now for the chameleon, the mouth is really funny. Uh, it's kind of wide like lips and the eye starts out with a black dot and then several circles around that two, three, whatever you have room for. Uh, the black dot, I, I wouldn't make it just a little dot. Uh, then you are going to, um, oh, there's probably a, a little nostril that you can add. And then there's a very funny shape on most chameleons. They're all different, but you can have another shape on top of his head. Any old shape that you want, as long as it's not something quick like this. It's not a half circle. So if you're doing the lizard, you still want to do the mouth down and a little tiny black curve or a spot at the bottom. You do not want it to be straight. And the eye is more a shape like this with a bigger pupil and then a few wrinkles underneath and maybe even on top. Okay, you know, reptiles have very scaly skin with lots of designs. Uh, if you're doing just a lizard, that's all you do. If you're doing an iguana, you want not triangles, but kind of curved triangles, kind of like hair in a way, uh, if you'd like, on the head. Now, we're going to do the back. No matter what, the back is not straight, it's going to be curved. 
So I'm gonna make it come all the way around. Actually, I'm gonna make it go off the edge of the bottom of my paper because I'm forcing myself to draw large. And the chameleon, oh, I'll bleed off or touch the side of the paper. Okay, now it's really important. The legs are bent. And a lot of times I see students do the legs and feet kind of like a person's, uh, kind of like a person's hand. They look like fingers. The first thing we're going to do is a half of an oval shape, no ending to it. And on chameleons, it's kind of skinny. And then you'll come opposite direction out. And they have funny fingers that grab onto branches. So I do two fingers under and one finger on top. And then I have to continue to come back around. It's not straight. Now you can even have the curve going down like that. Now I know it seems very strange not to have these connected. So you got the head and the leg separate. You're going to add one little line there. And then chameleons have kind of funny uh, skin. So do iguanas underneath like this. Uh, the next thing you're going to do, the back leg, this one bent back and then forward. The back leg goes forward and then bends like this. So it kind of reminds me of a boomerang. And then you're going to do, I do it bigger in the back than I do it in the front because it's the strong part of the um, chameleon. And then finish this and then you know how to do the skinny little fingers. Um, one up and two down. Uh, then wherever you made this line to join those, you hop over, finish it, hop over again, go off the bottom or the side of the paper. But where is the tail? <laughs> well, that tail, you have to just imagine, comes down around like this. But you notice... I just made a curve starting at the bottom, going all the way around like this. Now I have to put a curved line in the corner, another curved line, double line. It gets skinnier, 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 skinnier until I finish, okay? So think about that. And then on his back, you're gonna put, oh, one or two lines kind of wiggly squiggly like this. And you can do uh, a little bit of that on the tail if you want to, a little bit smaller. It's not a scribble. It's a up and down kind of a wavy line. Okay, so now let's go over. It looks kind of funny because he's gonna grab onto a branch, but we aren't finished yet. If you're drawing smaller, then you have the room to continue the whole tail here. Now let's go to the uh, iguana or lizard. And uh, first thing we're going to do is the leg, the front leg that goes back and forward. Now that's not a straight line. Those are kind of slightly curved. Uh, and then you're going to do double lines, but the feet are much more, they have four or five fingers, but you're, you can do four if you want and they're long and skinny and pointy. If you only wanna do three, that's okay, four, five, whatever. And how does the back leg go? Opposite, this one went back and then forward. Back leg goes forward and back. Double it. I always like to make the back one th thicker, fatter. And then come down, curve around, and those long skinny toes are even longer for the feet of a lizard or an iguana. From there, I gotta finish that little line from the head to the leg, hop over, stop. How come I stop? Because the leg's in the way. Hop over again, and I go right off the bottom of the paper, but we know that a lizard or iguana have very long skinny tails, almost looks like a snake. 
But did you notice? I went around and I got skinnier and skinnier till it's a point. This is what we call bleeding off the edge. And then you continue on his back to do those funny little spiky things. And they are not, uh, they are not triangles like this. Okay, that's gonna look more like a dinosaur, so be careful. Make them skinny and kind of curving. I know I'm doing it fast, you'll go slower. Remember, there's no mistakes in art. You do it the way you're comfortable. And I start going a little bit shorter as I'm continuing down to the bottom of the tail. If you want to, you can do a few more bumps down here if you like. Okay, the next thing, I have to put them on a branch because they're just flying around in the sky right now. How do I do that? Well, I can start up here, up here, down here. I'm gonna start down here. Whoops, ran into that leg again, hop over. Ran into the second leg, hop over. Ran into the tail, hop over, all the way across. But that looks like a piece of string, not a branch. So I'm gonna start from here. Whoops, ran into the foot, hop over. Ran into the tail, hop over, and go all the way across. Nice, big, thick branch. If you want to make part of another leg showing, you know, from the other side, you can add it and then show a few of the long skinny fingers, but you don't have to. That's to make it look more three-dimensional. And as far as designs on these, you may do whatever designs you want. So for example, on lizards and iguanas, you might wanna do some big shapes, no polka dots, and a lot of wrinkles. If you're doing just a plain old lizard, you can do spots, but no po polka dots. Very irregular shapes. You can even do some stripes, but they're not straight. So what I would like you to do, oh, we have to add a branch to, for the uh, chameleon. How come I stopped? because I ran into his foot. Coming around, down here, stop, hop over, and I have to hop over here because it needs to be a little thicker. And make sure that the branch goes from one side of the paper to the other. Now the process of designs. Oh gosh, I can have a lot of fun. No scribbles but I can have fun with shapes and lines. and You don't wanna make stripes. Stripes would be very boring. You wanna make, like I said, irregular shapes. You can do some dots for texture. Uh, you can do some shapes around the eye. You can do some little stripes around the eye, if you like. Uh, you can do Oh, I call them like rocky shapes. They're not polka dots, again, that on the uh, piece that's on the top of the head. And you put as many designs on these reptiles as you wish, even on the legs, uh, everywhere you want some of these. And then, you know, they can be more like stripes if you want, but are they straight stripes? No, don't forget the tail. You have to do some designs on the tail that are not straight line, but kind of wavy or curved lines. The more, the better. Uh, sometimes I put a few little lines here. And of course, we'll, we'll need more, but you'll continue on with that. Now, if you have uh, time, you will of course do some plants. Are they little tiny leaves like this? Eh. It's okay, but you would like to fill it in better. So why don't you put a cluster of them and start getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. Oops, I could only do half of a leaf. Why? Because the branch was in the way. Um, if you want something, uh, a big leaf behind your reptile, like he's in the jungle or something, oh, you can do all kinds of fun leaves any shapes you want, just make sure they have a vein down the middle. Now I couldn't finish that one because it goes behind the reptile. You can also do some lines and textures on your branch if you want. 
Uh, you may do a tongue if you like, and you may do breakfast, lunch, or dinner for one of these reptiles is bugs. So you can put as many of those as you want. Then if you'd like to, you can color in. If you have a black pen, this is wonderful. You can color in nice little back and forth strokes to color in shapes and then add more and continue to do that. Put as many leaves, you can even put flowers if you want. Same thing with the lizard or iguana. You still want lots and lots of designs and shapes. Single, double, whatever you know you want. And the same thing with uh, the tree. You might want some texture on the tree. Uh, you'll have designs on the tail. You will have uh, vines. Now, if I'm doing a vine that comes down, I can't draw over. I have to stop here, hop over, and have it finish down here. Every time I run into something I already drew, I have to hop over. Well, what if I have one that's going down behind this? Hop over, winding, twisting around, hop over, wind around here, stop and start, stop and start. You can make as many of those vines as you wish and then add as many leaves as you wish. Big leaves, because no matter what paper you are using, you are gonna fill that paper. If your reptile is small, then you need to do a lot of background. If your reptile is nice and big, then, oh, and I'm putting wrinkles too, I forgot putting a few wrinkles around just to make it look a little more texture because you know the, they have very scaly skin. You can even do little scales if, you, if you'd like to. Uh, also a tongue and breakfast, lunch, or dinner if you would like. You don't have to have the tongue at all, but you do have to fill the space with some kind of background. And when I'm drawing an exotic jungle flower, I do not do it small. I do it very, large. Now I know I draw kind of fast. I don't want you to do that. I want you to take your time. Stop and pause the video anytime. And then when you are shading something, you're taking your pencil, unless you're going to add colored pencils for the colored kind. Uh, you are shading back and forth, back and forth, just like we talked about with uh, colored pencils, any kind of pencil always the same direction. You don't start going this way and then start going this way and this way. You go one direction. Fill it in. The darker you can get it, uh, the better it's going to work. And that may, uh, you may have to go over it two or three times. Then you're going to take your tissue and you're going to wrap it around your index finger and you're going to smooth those out. Then you can add little, from the tissue, you can add little shadows like that. So let's say I was going to do the leaf and I don't want to color in the whole leaf. I might just do a couple spaces, color them in with my pencil, and then take the tissue, wrap it around my index finger, whoops, and smooth those out. Okay. Uh, some people like to shade in the whole background and color. Some people like, like this one, hardly anything is uh, shaded in on the reptile, but the sky is all done. So there's many, many options. And I want you to have really a lot of fun with designing the skin of your reptile. Uh, if you run into any problems, it's a good idea to have your practice sheet, uh, an extra sheet, so that you can, you know, start practicing if you're not sure of the shape on another, you know, another piece of paper. So boys and girls, I want you to have a lot of fun with this. I want you to really work hard. This one takes kind of a long time uh, because of all the details. But you uh, really need to concentrate mostly on filling the whole space of your paper. 
not drawing small. It's always good to make the reptile or your subject matter go off the edge of your paper. Now, if I was gonna color in a big area, let's say, um, oh, here. I don't have to use big, long strokes. I have to use back and forth, back and forth strokes, very close together, and then I move down and do a little bit more like this. Move down, gotta go in between these. See, if you have the advantage of a black pen, you can do some things black and some things gray. I'm gonna wrap this around my finger, smooth it out again, and maybe add some shadow here. So you take the graphite and add it. Have a lot of fun, and this may be your last art lesson uh, before the end of this year, and maybe we'll do some more next year. Signing off now, Miss Chiron.